This film's going to give you some practical tips and some facts to help you get the most out of switching from tobacco to e-cigarettes. I spoke to Sam. He made the switch from smoking to vaping and has some great experience to share. Well, I started smoking when I was about 15 or 16 and was smoking pretty heavily for about 10, 12 years until I heard about vaping and I've been just vaping for probably the past two years now. E-cigarettes all have some things in common. They all contain a battery, an atomizer that turns the e-liquid into vapour and of course the e-liquid itself. The first and probably the most popular uh, at least a few years ago were the cigar-like devices. As you can see, some of these look very much like your standard cigarette. That's the name, cigar-like. This device is perhaps what springs to mind when you think of an electronic cigarette. I've given these a go before. Um, I didn't particularly get on with them very well. It's the fact you've got to draw on them really hard and it doesn't really taste like anything and it doesn't, it doesn't give you much of a kind of nicotine hit at all. Many smokers start on these cigar-like devices. They're easy to use, they're familiar to people because they look like cigarettes and you even vape on them in a similar way. The downside of the cigar-like devices is that they don't produce much vapour or give you as much nicotine as you typically would have got from your cigarette smoke. So then I progressed on to one of these, which is a slightly more advanced but still quite a basic e-cigarette. Um, and this gives you the option of changing the voltage so that you can kind of increase the, the heat of the vapour that you're inhaling and, you know, to some extent the strength of it. So this is the little tank on top that you'd fill up with your e-liquid and it has a couple of wicks that just draw the liquid onto a heating element inside here and obviously you've got your battery on the bottom that heats up these little wires inside that then vaporise the liquid and by turning this dial on the bottom you can essentially change the amount of power going through that coil and increase the heat of the vapour. When you're using these, it's, um, it's quite a similar smoking action to a cigarette. You do a little breath into your mouth and then chase it down into your lungs. Um, but you'll find you have to do it for quite a long time to get a similar effect as smoking a cigarette. And that can be quite frustrating at first. It still didn't quite give me the, the hit that I needed to get off of smoking rollies. You may see reference to sub-ohm or sub-ohming. This is where the resistance in the coil is less than one ohm. With a sub-ohm device, you're going to need a bigger, more powerful battery. But the advantages, perhaps, of using a sub-ohm device is that you generate more vapour, which for some people is important. So this is the one that finally got me off smoking cigarettes, basically. So I had a go on a friend's that was uh, the same style of tank. And it just, it gave you that proper hit. It's just a battery at the bottom and tank on the top. And they're both just a little bit larger, which means that the battery can last for a lot longer, but also that it can put out a lot more power. So with this one, you can adjust the wattage that flows through the, the atomizer, and that can change the temperature of the vapor that it produces and also the amount of vapor that it produces. What, what sort of maintenance is needed? What do you need to, to buy to keep it going? Um, so they're quite simple to maintain really. I mean, once you've, you can just unscrew it like this and put the battery to one side. And the main bit of maintenance you'll have to do is replacing the atomizer inside. How do you know when you need to change the atomizer? After a while, it'll start to develop a sort of a burnt cotton wool taste that, you know, is really noticeable. You'll probably have to replace them about once a week, more or less. You can just unscrew the bottom of the tank and then that atomizer just unscrews from there and then you can buy packs of new ones that cost about two pound each and yeah, you just screw another one in and then you can start vaping again. Different electronic cigarettes use slightly different atomizers. Uh, these are usually brand specific so do make sure you read the instructions when you buy your product. And in terms of maintenance of the tank is there anything special you need to do for that? It's really easy to take these apart to maintain them. So you just unscrew the tank from the battery. The tank breaks down into three different bits. You've got a little mouthpiece that pops out there. And then you can unscrew the base of the tank. 
and this has the atomizer in it so that can unscrew from there and then these two parts can just be rinsed under a tap to help clean them out because you do get a little bit of residue that builds up in the middle of it and what you can do to clean that out is just take a little bit of tissue and just clean down the inside there and you probably want to do this once every day or two depending on how much you're using it and you can just screw those back together and connect them back up and this is just a rechargeable battery it charges up with a USB cable really straightforward I usually just charge it up overnight and it's ready to go for the whole next day you may have heard about e-cigarettes exploding. This is rare and is typically in devices that have been modified at home or that are unregulated. When you go to buy your electronic cigarettes, make sure you buy these from reputable dealers. You should care for your electronic cigarette much like you do with your other electronic devices, like your mobile phone. For example, make sure you use the appropriate charger. Is vaping different than smoking in terms of how you puff on these things? It is different. I mean, the, the process of inhalation is different from smoking. You have to do a lot of a deeper draw. That can take a little bit of getting used to. Um, but I think that's part of the appeal for it and part of what made it easier to switch is that you are doing a different process and it's a different habit that you're taking up. So, you know, whereas, you know, going back to the cigar likes, they were too similar but not quite good enough and didn't quite do the job. I had to learn a bit how to do it because obviously at first if you try and smoke this like a cigarette it'll be really hot in the back of your mouth and not be that nice at all. So the other thing you find is that people try this and they'll think that it's a lot harsher than smoking cigarettes and it can be at first but once you learn how to inhale it properly and just become you know slightly more accustomed to it it's actually a lot a lot smoother it takes a little bit of practice to get used to with a lot of these devices you need to sometimes do what's known as a primer puff if you haven't been using it for a while you just need to warm the coil up just to get it up to sort of optimum efficiency and so you can either just hold the button down till you hear a little click or just have a little warm up and then you can do a full I tend to use this a bit more frequently than I was smoking rollies because say you'd have a rolly you know every hour or so whereas with this you can just take a few puffs you know every 20 minutes and just you know you keep your nicotine levels at much more of a constant than the up and down of when you're smoking cigarettes the liquids that you use in your electronic cigarettes are often termed e-juice or e-liquid. They all vary by the amount or concentration of nicotine, the flavour and the ratio of propylene glycol to vegetable glycerin. Many people try different flavours until they find one that they like. This is also similar with nicotine concentration. I just want to make a small point about nicotine. A lot of people worry. They might have heard that nicotine causes cancer, for example. It doesn't. Nicotine is the relatively safe component of tobacco smoke. And with electronic cigarettes, you're getting the nicotine, but without all the harmful chemicals that you get in tobacco smoke. The mix of propylene glycol to vegetable glycerin is also important. The propylene glycol gives you that scratchiness or the hit in the back of your throat. The vegetable glycerin produces more vapor. You'll need to try some different strengths and flavors until you find the one that you like. Sam, can you tell me a little bit about the e-liquid you use? When I first started, I um, decided to use a really high strength liquid just to get me, you know, fully off of the rollies, you know, overload myself with nicotine. But only for about a week and then work down 18, 12, and now I'm on six milligrams, um, which, which works for me. Are flavours important? There are a lot of different e-liquid flavours out there and it, it can take you a little while to find one that you actually like and want to use and um, you'll probably find that you'll just stick with the same flavour for quite a long period of time. Um, so at the moment I've just got tobacco and nuts 
which is nice because it's quite a sort of savoury taste and I'm not a big fan of the um, the more sweet kind of desserty flavoured ones. The thing is you can just buy little bottles like this so if you try a flavour and you don't like it it's not that you've wasted a huge amount of money and you've got loads that you then have to use up. It's a lot, a lot cheaper than smoking, for sure. So then there may be some places where you just don't want to produce as much vapour as you would in other situations. How do you go about that? So one of the obvious things about these devices is that you produce massive clouds of vapour, which is quite fun a lot of the time, but um, obviously there's certain situations where it's not really appropriate, you know, if you're in a public space or in someone else's house, for instance. If you don't want to produce massive clouds of vapour, you can either just take little puffs on it or you can just hold it in for a bit longer and, um, and the vapour just dissipates and you're only breathing out a tiny little, little cloud. Sam, if I can ask you, if you had any advice for someone that's thinking about switching from smoking to vaping, what would your advice be? I mean, don't give up on it straight away it, because it is a lot different from smoking and it, and it takes a while to get used to so you might find that you have to you know perhaps try different strengths of nicotine it might take a while to find a flavor that you enjoy um, yeah just experiment one of the key messages I'd like you to take away from this film is that there are a range of different electronic cigarettes and a range of different e-liquids you're probably going to have to try a number of products until you find the one that's right for you.